Not gonna lie, I bought this microphone with the wrong intentions. In fact, in the very near future, I will be most likely destroying this microphone. But don't worry, it's all gonna be in the name of science. But I did get a few people saying that I should actually test it first and give it a good old review. And that is absolutely fair. You are completely right. So with that in mind, this is the MXL 770, my latest victim, I mean microphone. So the microphone body is solid. It's got a good grill. Gonna need it, huh? Just saying. I can see why people say these are great bodies to do mic mods with. Lots of room from the looks of it. And when you open it up, you can see just how much there actually is. You could park a car in there. On the back side of the mic, you will have the roll off switch and a pad switch. Outside of that, nothing really to remark on the build whatsoever. It's pretty plain Jane standard. This microphone is a small diaphragm cardioid condenser microphone. I will qualify that spec in a bit. It has a frequency response of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. The sensitivity is 15 millivolts per pascal. Max SPL of 137 dB. Self noise of 20 dBA weighted. Signal to noise ratio of 74 dBA weighted. The pad is 10 dB and the roll off is at 150 hertz and it's 6 dB per octave. Now taking a look at the frequency response graph, one massive standout is that huge boost in the highs, almost a 9 dB boost at 9K. And yes, we'll talk about that in a bit. Now, some of these specs might actually make you say oof or even big oof, but those numbers aren't that much off the AKGP120. So we're going to see how these two microphones sound in a bit. As for the small diaphragm capsule, let me explain. The size of a large diaphragm condenser is widely accepted to be at over one inch. This is 22 millimeters, which means it's 0.86 of an inch. So officially, it does mean it's a small diaphragm condenser. What does that actually mean sound-wise, though? Well, it does actually mean tighter sounds throughout the frequency response, though it shouldn't have an impact on the sound quality. Time for the off-axis rejection of the MXL 770. This is me speaking about four inches off the front of the capsule. Now I'm speaking about four inches off the side of the capsule. Now I'm speaking about four inches off the rear of the capsule. Now for the plosive rejection test of the MXL 770, and this is going to be brutal. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Now for the proximity effect test of the MXL 770. This is me speaking about four inches off the front of the capsule. Now I'm about one inch off the front of the capsule. Four inches, one inch. Now let's look at the roll off in the pad on the MXL 770. This is me talking into the mic from about four inches away with the roll off not engaged, so it's flat. Now I'm speaking into the microphone with the roll off engaged. And the one thing that really stands out to me as soon as I do this is those highs become overwhelmingly harsh. I don't know, maybe it's just me. What do you think? I'm a, a bit of an SE person. I have a pretty bad problem. I use a de-esser like it's going out of style. And this is going to require a lot of de-essing. Now let's take a look at the pad. So this is what it sounds like with the pad not engaged. And now we have the 10 dB pad engaged on the MXL 770. Pretty basic stuff. Now we have the MXL770 up against the P120. The P120 I've referred to as a bit of a, a unicorn microphone, and the MXL770 I've referred to as trash on a few occasions. This is the difference as I go between the two microphones. This is the MXL770. This is the AKG P120. They have a lot of things in common, including the capsule size. Now, technically, the capsule on the MXL770, I believe, is a little bit bigger than the P120, or I could be mixing them up. However, this is how the AKG P170 deals with those high-end frequencies, and this is how the MXL770 deals with it. This is a cheaper microphone than the MXL770. The AKG P120, I'll put the price up here, and the MXL770, the other price up here. Let's just cut to the chase, why don't we? I don't like this mic. That egregious boost from 5 to 10K is brutal, it makes any sibilance just a harsh mess in my ears. The plosive control is non-existent. When, while I'm a worst case subject, it's almost difficult to not get a plosive on this microphone. The roll off does kind of help with plosives, but then your ear can only hear the harshness of that five to 10 K and it almost becomes unlistenable. I, sure, with those complaints, there is some good in this. The low end is tight, mids aren't super muddy, but for a microphone that costs more than the P120, this is a hard pill to swallow. 
For most people, this microphone might be a massive waste of money. That is unless you plan on modifying it. Or if you're like me, then maybe you plan on destroying it. And if you're here watching this in the future, that video is right here. But if you're watching this in the present time, well, it's coming up Monday.